In this video, I want to talk about Azure Bicep. Azure Bicep is a new capability which has been introduced by the Azure team. And this is not a new service. It's basically a, in, an implementation which will help an existing component in Azure. So what, it, what exactly it does, it, it simplifies your experience of deploying your workloads into the Azure ecosystem. Now, if you have used Azure, you would be knowing that everything in Azure interacts or communicates with the external world using a template known as ARM template. So what exactly it means is uh, ARM template is more about Azure Resource Manager template. So that's the template which you can use and deploy any resource, be it a VM or be it a past service like Azure Function, Web App, SQL Database. So everything in Azure can be uh, in set up or deployed using one of the ARM templates. Now, if you would have seen those ARM templates, those are basically JSON files. Now, one of the fundamental challenge with JSON file is JSON was never built for human read or write. So JSON was built for machine read and write purposes. Now, since we have those templates, ARM templates built on JSON foundation, it was a very good experience from the starting, but eventually when the complexity of your environment and deployment goes up, it becomes really hard to manage those templates. And that was a bit of a reason why this entire component Azure Bicep came into the picture. So let me go into uh, some details around what exactly is Azure Bicep. So firstly, Bicep, it is a bas it, it's basically a code transpilation and, and what it does is it basically transforms a bicep code, which is a language in its own self, into an, a native ARM template and vice versa. So if you provide it as an ARM template, it will give you a, an Azure bicep code base for the same ARM, similar ARM template. Secondly, the most important thing is uh, bicep is a domain specific language. As I said, it is a language and a platform in its own. So what it does is it's, it's basically a transpiler. Now, if I explain transpiler, I think so the closest relation would come with uh, TypeScript. So if you would have used Angular 2 or beyond or any other, even the Visual Studio Code platform is written on top of TypeScript. A lot of components are written on top of it. So TypeScript is fundamentally uh, a language which is built on top of JavaScript, but you write in a specific language and during the transpilation process, that TypeScript is converted into a JavaScript. Now, Bicep works on the same foundation, but what it does is it takes the Bicep code and then once you run it or build it, it basically transpiles into a native ARM template. The third and most important thing is Bicep is not here to replace ARM. ARM will always be and will always exist. Uh, whatever investment of uh, your time and money as an organization which you have done for building your ARM templates will still be vital. But what this Bicep component will do is it will basically simplify your life and it will make it easy for creating new templates or creating new uh, deployments and it will also simplify your existing ARM repository management by transforming them into Biceps and you get more crispy and reasonable code base. Now let's see how exactly the bicep works. So as I said, the bicep is a transpiler. And as you can see in the middle, I have this gear, which is what uh, that bicep transpiler represents. So on the left side, firstly, let's say I, I create a bicep file, which is basically a domain specific language, DSL, and that, will ha that has its own structure and way how you write it. So once you create a bicep file, you can provide that bicep file to the transpiler. The transpiler basically processes that and provides an outcome, which is an ARM template. Now in the vice versa, let's say you have your own real state of resources in Azure and you want to get a bicep version of those resources. So you can bring in those ARM templates, provide those ARM templates to the bicep transpiler and bicep will provide you uh, uh, and, the, and that will outcome as a bicep uh, file and that you can manage in, as a, your, in your repository system. So now let's see literally how exactly it looks like in, in the code base. So let me zoom this a little bit. So to start with, I'll just show you a simple bicep file. So let me delete this. And this is my bicep file. So if you look at this, this is a simple bicep file where I'm trying to deploy a storage account. And as you can see, it's very crisp. 
Now if I compare this bicep file with a JSON sample of something similar, this is what a JSON sample looks like for a storage account. So if I keep it side by side, so let me open this and if I keep it split right. So as you can see, oh, those are both the same files. Yep. So now as you can look over here, I have the same object which I am trying to build in Azure. But if you look at this, I have around like 25 lines and over here everything has been compacted into eight line. And that's the beauty of about Azure Bicep. So this is one of the beauty, but yeah, obviously, as you can see, it's more skimmed, more readable, and yeah, you don't need to m bother about the commas and, and obviously the angular brackets and stuff like that. So all that is pretty simplified in Azure Bicep because it's just like a object-oriented language. Now, if I show you how exactly uh, the, the, the smartness of Bicep uh, exists, is if I write over here resource, and if I say my resource name is test, storage and I say so then it'll ask me what type of resource are you trying to build and as you can see over here I have a full list of all the services or uh, capabilities which are available in Azure in my drop down uh, list which is uh, the intelligence I've got now as you can see I have services I have API management services that I have certificate gateways and the list goes on and on and mostly it covers every service in Azure so that's very hard to find one but what you can do is you can quickly start typing and I'll say storage and as you can see I have got all the storage options over here and I can select one now once I've selected the storage it will ask me okay what exactly uh, are the details about your storage which you want to create and that's where I get all the intelligence so I can tell the location I can tell the name I can tell about the SKU of my storage account I want to add some tags I can add those tags and as you can see I have uh, the details of external location and all that stuff so let me zoom this a little bit uh, okay let me uh, view and then appearance zoom in okay that's better so now since as you can see I have those uh, that object created for a storage account I can say I need the name so I'll just put a name as uh, test and sorry test as if okay it needs a uh, string type and if I hover this, as you can see, uh, it tells you even what is required and what is not required. Uh, the properties are pretty detailed over here. And if I can go in the properties, I can say, uh, I can say uh, what are the properties I need. So I can, if I select over here, now you can see I have all the property options. So I can add custom domain in my storage account. I can add networks, network ACL. And obviously everything which you can do through the portal and you would have seen in the portal is all accessible through this. So now once you have built your template, which I have over here, now let's see uh, what is the experience if you want to deploy the same in, in Azure. So if I go into the Azure portal, let me open a new browser. And if I I uh, want to log into Azure portal so I'll just do that I'll, I'll use my sorry I'll use my organizational account and once I log in I'll get to the resource group where um, I need to deploy by the time that okay this is already load uh, it should be all clean so I don't have any resources in my <coughs> Azure resource group if I come back over here so now I'll, I have a couple of uh, commands which I've already written this is just a simple partial file I've created uh, so the first thing about everything before you deploy Bicep is you need to install a couple of things or, or you need to set up your environment. So for my purposes, what I've done is I've installed the environment and the first thing about that is you need to install Bicep and this uh, install Bicep script file, it is ready-made which I've just copied from the Bicep repository. So if I go into the Bicep, so I'd say Azure Bicep and that's the repository so if I go over there and if I click on the home so there are a couple of things in this and then it also says install the tooling 
and that's where if you click on that it will take you uh, to different options if you want to install with Visual Studio Code or if you want to install on Linux, on Mac, on Mac OS and Windows and then the latest Windows installer is also available but yeah if you want to do a manual partial deployment this is what I showed over there on the screen uh, on my Visual Studio environment. So once you have done that the next thing is you might need to install Bicep uh, as a as an extension in your Visual Studio Code and it's natively available so you can install that so that basically helps me in getting these icons and obviously a little bit of couple of smartness which you can see on my uh, environment is all coming due to that extension so once I have all that set up and I have this file so now what, as you can see I'm just accessing my main.bicep file which is this file and I'm saying I want to deploy it into a RG bicep resource group and this is the AZ deployment group create. I just, uh, when you basically run this PowerShell command, it adds that extension, PowerShell extension and, and the C and the exe for bicep into your environment. So that's why when I run this AZ command, it can grab all those details of how to run the bicep. And uh, if I go back into my Azure portal, so I don't have anything, uh, but what I'll do is I'll just quickly run this. So I'll say, yeah, run the command and uh, now it's running so it says an error because i made some changes so that's that might be the reason so if i say control z for everything i did yep so all good i'll just save that and now if i run the command again so i'll just quickly run that so Okay, I could not find the file. Okay, so all right. So it's wrong directory which I am targeting. So I'll go into the right directory. CD, C colon. And so this is basically sitting inside my uh, bicep folder inside. So I'll just quickly grab the folder location from my machine. So I'll go dev, GitHub, and uh, I'll say Azure bicep that should be the location where I am having my code base so CD and that's the location okay so now I have so now if I see my directory yeah I have everything so let's run the same bicep command again and hopefully it should run now Yep, so as you can see it's running now. Now the beautiful thing is I can go into my Azure portal and if I go inside the resource group and I inside the settings, if I click on deployment, I can see there is a main file which is getting deployed and obviously it, it I can show see more details around what's happening in the deployment process. So it's uh, exactly the same experience because at the end of the day Bicep didn't do anything different. It just took that Bicep file which I created over here in the Bicep DSL language and then it deployed that entire thing, transformed that in transpiled that entire thing into an ARM template and that got deployed into Azure portal. So as it showed the deployment is successful. So if I go back into my resource group, I can see I have a, a, a Asip Bicep storage account uh, created over here, which is the same storage account over here. Now, in addition to this, there are a couple of additional capabilities which is well supported by Bicep uh, now at, at version 03. And well, so one of those are looping capability. There is a modularity. You can build modules. And then obviously the transpilation has been uh, the fundamental since the version 02, I think. So if I click on the main.bicep file on the looping side, as you can see, what I've done is, let's say I want to create five different or three different storage accounts. And I don't want to write three different uh, ARM templates or three different scripts to do that. Or maybe write a one template with parameter, uh, ARM template parameter, and then run through PowerShell because that's additional. So what this DSL gives you is, it gives you all that experience natively inside at one place. Now, what you can do over here is I've created an array of names, and this is just the same same template which I showed you, but I have just parameterized the name over here. And the name comes from a for loop which is running over here. So now if I come over here and if I run this uh, particular file, it will be able to create multiple storage accounts for me. So if I come back into my bicep uh, file, PowerShell file, and if I and the same command, nothing different, just targeting the new file. So if I click on that, so that would basically, uh, once it is successful, 
it should be available and visible in my Azure portal. So yeah, it's running. If I go back over here and if I go into my deployments, now you can see there is another deployment which is happening from a main file. And as you can see, I'm getting, uh, there are three different storage accounts which are getting created. Now this is the benefit about the looping, which obviously would be a nightmare if you want to do it with an ARM template. Now the last one is more about the modules. So modules is where I'll, I basically want to talk about how we can break the entire uh, bicep experience into different modules. Now I have a VNet module and in that module I have created a template for a VNet and in that VNet I have some parameterized uh, options. So as you can see I have a name which is parameterized and I am passing subnet as well as address spaces also as a part of my parameter inside the particular VNet uh, bicep file. Now this component now can be referred by my main file where I'm doing the concrete work. So what I'm doing is I'm saying I want to call that VNet bicep component, but I want to pass the name. I want to pass the, the address spaces and I want to pass the subnet details. But this is not it. The benefit about this is I'm over here, I'm just trying to build a hub and spoke model. Now in the hub and spoke model, I, as you can see, I have a hub and then I have created a spoke, but they basically just contain the configuration and my entire VNet build process is all happening through this VNet configuration, VNet file. So if I run this particular uh, component module, it would be able to create a hub and spoke model and it and then on top of it I can create maybe 20 or 40 other spokes using the same VNet file which I have over here. So if I come back into my bicep command.ps file and if I say uh, I need to run the modular component so if I can come over here and if I run this so it again goes and deploys everything into my uh, same resource group which I have shown earlier. So if I click, uh, go back into my deployment and if I refresh this, this shows uh, it's completed, but now it's a hub v, uh, VNet bicep components which is which are getting uh, deployed. So I think it's sort of already deployed if I come back over here. And if I refresh this, uh, not yet. So if I click maybe, uh, so let's see in the template. Okay, it's still running, so let yeah, now it's solid, it's deployed. So hopefully if we come back over here and if I refresh, as you can see, I have a hub VNet and a, sub, a subnet VNet. And this makes this entire experience pretty uh, pretty good because now everything can be component component modeled. It can have a for loop. And this is all like ARM template deployment, but it's just one level different, which is more, uh, more automated, more structured and more in a programming language. So if you're coming from any type of uh, programming language, be it, uh, be it C sharp or uh, any other technology, you would be able to resonate well with this. Now, if I come over here and if I, the other thing which I wanted to show you is more about the bicep transpilation process. So transpilation is more about, I can use the bicep and I can transform a bicep file to a, a JSON file and, and the vice versa. So if I click over here and if I delete this, and if I come back into my main.bicep and if I run this, so what will happen is if everything is uh, successful and if this is, as you can see, now I have a main.json file, which is my uh, same storage account, which I showed you earlier, which is coming from this bicep. And if I cl delete my bicep file and if I create, uh, and if I run this decompile process for my bicep, that would basically generate a JSON file. So as you can see now, I have a main dot uh, bicep file, which I deleted and it has the same storage. So uh, bicep is pretty much a very good uh, service from Azure ecosystem and it can be used for multiple purposes. And yeah, uh, I would highly recommend for anyone to definitely experience this. Uh, and I have a GitHub repo which I'll also add in my uh, in my in the links in the video, which you can utilize for uh, for your own references. And you can use uh, I have the code base which I just showed is all documented over here and how you can even run it. So hopefully this session was useful, and thanks a lot for listening.